7 o'clock county commission meeting to order. At this time, I'm going to call the west side of JROTC to post the colors. But please, everyone, please stand. May be seated. <clears throat> Mr. Messman. Mr. Chairman, at this time, uh, we also have something that's different for a regular county commissioner's meeting, and that is swearing in a new member of the board, not really a new member, but uh, new to the board tonight. And at this time, we would like to call on Mr. Frank Mitchell and the Honorable Rena Turner to come forward. Ms. Turner will be swearing Mr. Mitchell in. Mr. Mitchell, you can ask any of your family members that want to come up to come with you, please. It is with great pleasure that I'm with you tonight, and I do appreciate your allowing me to administer this oath to Mr. Mitchell. If you'll place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right. And if you can kind of angle that way, she wants to take your picture. <laughs> do you, Frank Mitchell, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States, so help you God? Do you, Frank Mitchell, further solemnly and sincerely swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof, that you will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the constitution of the United States, to the best of your knowledge and ability, so help you God? And do you, Frank Mitchell, further swear that you will well and truly execute the duties of the office of county commissioner according to the best of your skill and ability and according to law, so help you God. Congratulations.
this time we'll call Mr. Johnson for the invocation. Let's pray, please. Heavenly Father, this evening we welcome a new member of our board, and Father, we still grieve at the loss of Mr. Williams, but Father, we just pray you'll bless Frank in his, in his efforts on this board. And we'll come to his aid, and he'll come to ours, and we'll work together for your glory and for the good of the folks of this county. And we just want to pause. We'll honor one <clears throat> this evening with, some, with medals that he earned in a war, <clears throat> war many years ago. But Father, we just pray in Jesus' name that you will always send us such men, honorable men who love you and love their country and will serve you and serve us. And, Father, it's a blessing to have those people among us. And we pray for our military tonight that you would be upon Your hand would be upon them and you would keep them safe. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Mr. Mashman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as is custom and in accordance to, with the uh, rules of procedure for the Iredell County Board of Commissioners, the county manager serves as the chair during the reorganization of the board. Uh, since um, this is a little bit unusual, this is normally done after uh, an election, but I think everyone is aware of the circumstances. And um, so there is a need to organize the board tonight as far as the election of the chair. Uh, of course, Godfrey Williams was the chairman of of the Iredell County Board of Commissioners. And so at this time, the chair will receive nominations for the election uh, of office of the chairman of the Iredell County Board of Commissioners. Mr. Mashburn, I'd like to place a nomination, uh, Mr. Norman, for the position of chairman. Okay, Mr. Marvin Norman has been nominated. Are there other nominations? Hearing none, all of those in favor of Mr. Norman as chairman of the Ardo County Board of Commissioners signify by saying aye. 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 In the opposition, same sign. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mar uh, Norman, you are now the chairman of the Ardo County Board of Commissioners, and as such, that now creates a vacancy for the vice chairman. And unless there is objection, the, the, the uh, chair will now uh, receive nominations for the position of vice chair. Okay. Do we have any nominations for vice chair? Mr. Chairman, I nominate Steve Johnson to be vice chairman. Any additional nominations? Any other nominations? Any questions regarding the motion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, likewise. Okay. Mr. Messman, do you have adjustments to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I really, there are no adjustments that I have this evening. Do we have anyone else who has adjustments or additions? At this time, I'm going to call on Mr. Robinson for a special presentation.
Mr. Robinson, before you publish the order, I'd like to read about what Valor. The Bronze Star is the third highest medal that requires combat with a, if, if it's with valor. It can be presented as a service medal, but it is, the high, it is the third highest if it's presented with combat that the Army has to offer. The V device, as we call it, for valor signifies it is worn to denote the participation in acts of heroism involving conflict with an armed enemy. That is the significance of that V, heroism. Back to what I said, it's a significant award. But I know Edwin Fulgeman, the reason you're here for is not that, is your CM, your, is your combat medics badge. And I'm going to explain it before I do, I, I do the order. The combat medics badge is issued when you are assigned to an infantry unit, rifle, company, platoon, or smaller, actually serving on the ground with those infantry men. Doc, thank you. From an infantryman who loved his doc, thank you. Publish the orders. Attention to orders. United States Army present Specialist 4th Class, Edwin M. Fulgham, Jr., Bronze Star with V device, date of action, 15 April 1968 in the Republic of Vietnam. For heroism not involving participation in aerial flight in connection with military operations against a hostile force in the Republic of Vietnam. On this date, Specialist Fulgham will serving as a medical aidman with his armored cavalry regiment while operating in the area of Ben Mai. The friendly force was suddenly subjected to the intense Viet Cong mortar attack. One of the ammunition carriers received a direct hit, causing it to burst into flames and creating new numerous secondary explosions. Without hesitation or regard for his personal safety, Specialist Fulgham braved the impacting enemy rounds and the exploding ammunition as he rushed to the scene of the blazing vehicle. He found three soldiers in need of medical attention and immediately administered first aid to his wounded comrades and assisted them to cover. The initiative, courage, and skill of Specialist Fulgham, while under heavy fire, were greatly responsible for keeping friendly casualties to a minimum. Specialist Four Fulgham's outstanding display of aggressiveness, devotion to duty, and personal bravery is in keeping with the finest traditions of the military service and reflects great credit upon himself, the 1st Infantry Division, and the United States Army. Signed, Archie R. Heil, Colonel, Chief of Staff. Specialist Dr. Fulton, I present you with your Bronze Star and Bronze Star with both these clubs.
Kind of makes the rest of the agenda seem trivial, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, ah. Appointment before the board, uh, Mr. Jim Strausser. While, while we're waiting, uh, I don't think it was mentioned, but the awards tonight were presented by a retired Army colonel, <laughs> and um, we certainly appreciate your, your service and to duty as well. Spoken from a Vietnam veteran. Jim, make sure you speak into the microphone, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Um, I'm speaking here tonight on behalf of the Red Dog Drive Homeowners Association. Um, Red Dog Drive was a... a private road built 30 years ago by Jack Curtis. Um, it has, uh, our homeowners association has uh, nine members, um, the residents on the road, and one more member, Crown Castle, um, which has a cell phone tower at the end of the road, um, or a half, half mile into the road. Um, over the 30 years, the road's been uh, taken a lot of abuse and use from um, not only the people that live on it, but the, the three cell phone towers that are off of uh, South Tower Drive, which is a county or a state-maintained state road. Um, the Iredell County purchased some land um, at, uh, at the halfway mile mark of the road um, November of 1987 and built the I believe it's the 911 tower in 1982. The second tower down there is uh, an Altel tower that was built in 1991, um, which is also on the county's land. And the lease agreement um, was made for a dollar a month, and it was a 30-year lease. Um, we found out this after we... Uh, um, talked with American Tower, who is um, the current owner of the Altel Tower. Um, and they happen to be leasing the tower site from the county for a dollar a month. Um, Crown Castle is our third um, cell phone tower that was built in 1996. Um, it was bought by Crown Castle in March of 1999, and the lease agreement is... Um, to a private um, property owner off of Red Dog Drive, and that agreement is between $1,000 and $1,500 a month. Um, I guess the reason I'm before you um, today is we've been, the, the nine people that live on the road have been trying to maintain it, and we've asked for some help from the three cell phone towers that uh, use the road for their maintenance and uh, upkeep of the towers. Um, Jonathan Dyer from Crown Castle um, said that they wanted to participate and um, we agreed upon a, a sum of $2,600 for previous road maintenance fees. Um, and then he wanted to join our homeowners association, which we have a $300 a year um, fee to help maintain the road, cut the grass, and keep everything uh, um, well taken care of. Um, since 2006, we've had uh, three major improvements to the road. Um, in 2006, we spent um, $5,200 um, bringing in gravel and 
there's a lot of erosion on that particular part of the road. There's, um, in a half a mile, there's 45 um, feet of elevation change. The ditches um, were poor to non-existent in 2006. So we, we went in and cut some new ditches. Um, uh, CBC, one of the local contractors, gave us some advice and, and helped us on building the correct ditches. Um, in 2009, we came back and um, put another $4,800 into the road. And then this year, we put uh, $6,300. Um, and we we're lucky this year, we, we got use of a skid steer for free and got some more equipment um, that enabled us to do a lot more work. Um, more efficiently and uh, ec economically for us. Um, I guess the, the bottom line is, is, is uh, Iredell County has two cell phone towers there. One that is the county's tower, which is a 911 emergency tower that um, I personally feel is a pretty important tower. Is out of the three, the other ones are just communication TV, which if somebody's hurt, doesn't really matter. But the 911 to us is, uh, you know, the, obviously the most important. Um, Iredell County has agreed in the beginning to um, help us with $1,000 this year. Um, after that fact, we found out that they own the second tower, which is now uh, um, owned by American Tower. So they own, you know, we, the county owns two towers on our road. And... Um, Crown Castle came up with $2,600 for previous road maintenance so we could get the road um, back up to shape and, and hopefully we have the ditches cut and everything's cut so the drainage will be fine. We won't have much for road maintenance anymore. Um, I guess that's all I'd like to say. I just uh, um, would like the commission to take a look at what we've presented and and see if there's a a, um, a way of us coming to an agreement on previous road maintenance which um, the county has never held participate in and then something um, in the future since they do have two cell phone towers that um, they being the tenant of one and the owner of another um, are supposed to upkeep. Questions for Mr. Strasser? Uh, Mr. Chairman, no questions for Mr. Strasser right now. I have a question for Mr. Mashburn. Um, your best knowledge, Mr. Mashburn, how often is this road used by the county? When we first started talking about this, it was determined that we use it probably about once a month to maintain uh, equipment that we have on the tower. Um, the other tower probably is used, and Tracy can correct me if I'm wrong, but probably about the same amount of time that, uh, that we use our tower, the other tower is used. Would you say weekly? Okay, it, we do not use it daily, uh, you know, there are the, the property owners that live on there uh, use that daily, uh, be usually more than say, one trip. Be safe to say fewer than 10 trips a month. Uh, oh, absolutely. Okay. What type of vehicles do we drive on that road? Well, uh, Mr. Martin is here. I'm going to let him respond to that question, if you would. Mr. Martin, what type of vehicles, when we maintain it, what type of vehicles do we drive on that road? Regular personal vehicles. Okay, just sedans or pickup trucks. Okay. Mr. Trasher, how many residents live on this road? You said you have a membership of $300 a year? Yes, there are nine uh, individuals that have houses on the road. And then uh, um, Crown Castle. I would say of the three cell phone towers, the American Tower, which is a cell phone for... Verizon, um, there's, they represent three different cell phone companies that use that tower. So they're, 
Um, I would assume probably the heaviest user with Crown Castle being the second and definitely Iredell County being, you know, not using it as much. I guess our thought was is that the 911 tower is the most important, obviously. And um, well, I would definitely want access to that. I understand. I, I, don't, I don't see the relevance between the importance of the tower versus the, the, how we're impacting the condition of the road. I mean, if the tower could be very important and we could be making 10 trips a day or the tire could be important and we can make fewer than 10 trips. Uh, the, the relevance in my mind is how much wear and tear is the county doing to the road? I, I, I do feel some moral obligation to help you folks, but I, I, you know, I represent the county, or we represent the county, and I think the county has a moral obligation to help you, but I don't think we have a moral obligation to go beyond what is our equitable share as far as the maintenance of the road. That, Mm -hmm. That's the figure I'm trying to arrive at. Mr. Mashburn, what's your estimation of the, uh, do you have an uh, approximate length that this road? I, I really just was looking at the map and it looks like it's probably about 800 feet. Is that about correct, Jim? I think it's about a half a mile from um, Reinhardt Road, the paved road, to the cell phone towers. The uh, that's all the way to the cell phone towers, but you don't use all of that. What's that? You don't, Everyone you, uses that on the way in, yeah. The, the, just the straight section that's so highlighted on your map? Yes. Yeah. That part there is probably about a half a mile. About half a mile? Yeah. I think the whole road is a mile and a half, maybe? I guess, I guess what I'm looking at is not the scale, so it's probably... I don't know if there's a... If, um, I got it from uh, Mr. Jackson. I'm not okay. sure if there's a... <laughs> Let me... Uh, I would like to fill the board in on a couple of things that, that have taken place. To begin with, to the best of my knowledge, the county was never asked previous to this to participate. Certainly it hasn't been since I've been here, and that's been 22 years. And uh, so we were not asked before this year to participate in this. Um, and, and again, when uh, this was presented to me and I discussed it with Mr. Martin, uh, as to how much we used it, uh, I made an a, uh, offer that the county would participate in the amount of $1,000 uh, to, toward the maintenance of the road for this year, and then that we would discuss with them future years uh, so that we would you know, do it, what would be equitable. And um, uh, the uh, community leaders uh, did not agree to that amount, so uh, I guess that's the reason they're here this evening. But they have been offered, and we have identified in the budget $1,000 that could go toward the maintenance of this road for the current year. Mr. Masham, that was your off offer in this evening. That would still be your recommendation? That is correct. Does the road qualify for any uh, state assistance? I mean, is it is it not on their their plan? Is it? It, it is not a state. Uh, it's not on the state system. It is a public road, but it is not on the state system. Uh, and before the state will take it over, it has to be brought up to state standards. Uh, we did request uh, uh, that the state, if the county uh, would enter into an agreement to purchase the stone. Uh, uh, along with the community, community would the state come out and spread the stone for us? But uh, we did not get a positive response to that question either. So, I mean, on, if we had a if we had a greater, we'd go out and if you know if the community bought the stone and we participated in that, we we wouldn't mind running a greater to spread the stone. Yeah. But that's not equipment that we have. As you know, we're not in the road business, so we don't do that. Any additional questions for Mr. Strausser? Thank you, sir. We will take it unadvised. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for the, uh, Mr. Pope. Okay. Is, is, Mr. Pope, is this something we discuss in uh, closed session or, or no, not? No, I don't think so. Okay.
any additional questions? So, the only thing I'm thinking, Mr. Chairman, is that we either need to maybe, if, if we're going to have to discuss this in open session, we may just go ahead and discuss it further tonight and take action, or or make a motion to bring it up as an agenda item next time, next time we talk, so we can get an answer. But if, if you got further discussion, we can do. I have no problem. Uh, I think I'm just making a motion that we uh, take Mr. Mashburn's recommendation and uh, say that we're going to pay a thousand dollars, and that's our that's our position then. Okay. Right. Mr. Kaler, or just a question: Are we going to contribute anything going forward in future years? Uh, I think we'll let Mr. Mashburn think about that a while and make another recommendation to us. But he's made an offer. Uh, I see no reason why we don't vote on it one way or another. I don't have a problem with $1,000. To be honest with you, that, that would be a little bit more than an equal share. But the, the re retroactive maintenance of the road does, does come to bear to some extent. Uh, I guess, Mr. Mashburn, you could, from my perspective, you could calculate something in the budget to contribute on the maintenance of this road. I don't, uh, I think the damage we're doing to the road is, is very minor in regard to the total amount of the traffic that goes across that road. And uh, if you want to make a recommendation in the budget that we include something, but I don't really feel obligated to pay more than what one neighbor's share is. If it's three hundred dollars a year, I don't. I don't think we're hurting that road as much as the people that live there. Quite frankly, since we don't go down it any more often than we do, but I, I don't believe I could support any more than any individual neighbor's paying. I, I agree that that I think that's a generous offer, but it's been made, and uh, certainly we can revisit. You know what length of time that one thousand dollars applies to since i don't you didn't you didn't make any statement one way or another that way did you no we um i, I guess in in our minds some uh, even though we had not been asked to participate before uh we felt that um we had used it before and that a thousand dollars in in my opinion uh addressed the fact that we hadn't participated before and would would begin that process, and I would anticipate, as as I indicated earlier, that we would we would sit down with the, the owners and try to determine what would be fair and our fair and equitable share uh, from this point forward, and we would be able to cover that out of uh, we we would include that in next year's budget uh, in the um, maintenance uh, and emergency communications budget. Uh, $300 is, is, is probably uh, a pretty good round number uh, for future, but I think $1,000 was what uh, was fair for this year, and that was my recommendation. That was the offer that I made, and that's my recommendation to the board. Okay. Mr. Any Chairman, I, comments from the board members? Uh, Chairman, I'd just, I just like to add that I think $300 is, is probably overly generous, just given the fact that we make one trip a month and each of these other families probably makes two trips a day or 60 trips a month. Just to put that in perspective, we're, we're, we're probably 1 60th of the average homeowner out there, uh, and we're paying full share. So I'm, I'm not sure that's equitable, but I'd, I'd just leave that with you to discuss for the future. Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Strauss, did you have something else? Yes. Um, I guess what we're looking at is since 2006, there's been $18,416 spent on keeping the road up, you know, making it better. Um, and that in one of my conversations with uh, Mr. Jackson, we had talked about how his um, people that were using the road were commenting six years ago that the road was in very poor condition. And now it's in much better condition. Um, and that, you know, is from, from the money that we've all stuck in. And if you want to look at the $18,416 and divide that up by the number of people on that road and then 
contribute your share, that would be uh, very nice. Okay. Any other comments? Any uh, questions for Mr. Towson? Yes, and that, this is not to be argumentative. I'm just sitting here trying to do this math. But if we said eighteen thousand dollars divided by the number of people on the road, and then we divide our number by sixty, then we we arrive at a pretty small number. Three hundred dollars. Okay. No, no. If you divide eighteen thousand by sixty, you get three hundred. If you divide our share by sixty, you get a very small number. Okay. Thanks, sir. Are you ready for vote? Yes, sir. Do we have a motion? Motion to uh, honor Mr. Mashburn's offer. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, my quiet. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Mashburn, you next. Mr. Chairman, the first item is a request from the Ebenezer, Ebenezer Volunteer Fire Department to proceed with a banking loan transaction. We have representatives of the fire department here tonight that will make that um, presentation. Mr. Mashburn. I would like to encourage everyone to speak to please speak up because we do have an interpreter in here this evening okay. and it's important that he be able to hear what you're saying. Yes, sir. Uh, we're here tonight to get permission to move forward with our funding for our fire department renovations. Uh, we've come to you before uh, to get the money to move forward with our plans for a building and our plans are done now. Uh, fire Commission has approved them. They actually put them into the budget this year, but our interest rate is going to run out April 30th. And I can't get the bank to extend that interest rate any longer. Uh, we've got an interest rate of 4.33 for 10 years uh, with a payment of $130,000 a year. So it was coming before you to go ahead and get that approved so uh, <clears throat> we can move forward with a loan before we lose the interest rate. Chief Kessler, thank, thanks for your service, first of all. Um, just, what, what prompted the, the, the need to build the new fire station? The size. Uh, we're running out of room. Uh, <clears throat> the department's been there since 1974. Okay. I have no room. Uh, I have 12 officers working out of a 10 by 10 office. Most of them work from home, carry everything in their trucks. Uh, with the size of the fire, to, fire trucks today and the number of trucks we got, we're just completely out of room. We're going to build two bays, we had two bays, living quarters, on to the building, and offices for the officers. Any additional questions? Yes, sir, you, you said the fire tax board had included this in their recommended budget for next year, or is that Yes, sir. Mr. Mashburn, you know how our revenue streams look in there? When I'm going to call on Ms. Blumenstein if she can address that. Based on the information that I received from um, Ronnie Thompson, they, I just did want to say that they did include 130000 as a recommendation for funding for next year. My estimates of revenue um, for the next year are, or excuse me, is a total of $4.6 million. Now, to fund the budgets that they're recommending, 
they will have to transfer some of their funds that are intended um, for debt service over to fund some of their general fund activities or their operating activities. There are sufficient funds as a total to cover this additional debt service, but they're going to have to transfer some funds to cover general operations. This is the fire tax board you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. Not, not general fund money, but general operations of the countywide fire tax district. Mr. Thompson here. I'm just wondering how many more of these requests we have pending. I mean, Mr. I just want to make sure I got a handle on things. Mr. Robertson and I are sitting there looking at a brick wall on this fire study commission when Lake Norman pulls out and there goes 40% of the money and that's what, three years away? Four right. years? Three. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, when you come up with this budget, you're three years. Yes, sir, I understand. About to run off a cliff at some point, and I want to make sure that bridge is built before we get there. I have not gone back through the minutes of the fire tax board meetings, but I did request from Frank Phillips. Um, I believe it was either the last week of March or the first week of April for a list of any commitments that had been discussed by the fire tax board for additional financings or large purchases, and also for the term of any new loans to be considered. But I, ha I just haven't received it yet. Okay. Any Thank more you, questions? Chief, you said B, B, and T would give you this rate for how long? You got, you got some sunset on this rate, sir. I'm sorry. You got some sunset on this rate? You said April 30th. Give you any idea what the rate would be after that? No, sir. I just said they couldn't hold to that rate at this time. economic climate, I don't see any dramatic increase in the interest rate in the foreseeable future. Uh, I'd feel a lot more comfortable voting on this if I was looking at a spreadsheet showing us some revenue streams. We meet on the 5th of May, our, our, our committee does, mm -hmm. where we're looking at what happens after Lake Norman pulls out. Um, you know, if, if, if we don't pass this tonight, it's just it's on us if the interest rate goes up a little bit and then we decide to do it. But it, it might be worth doing a gut check with the fire tax board because, uh, because this, these debt payments will take us into that, that period, of t period of time where we expect the fire tax revenues to drop by 40% once Lake Norman pulls out. And when that happens, it, it's, our, our committee's not found any way to, to reduce expenditures 40% or anything even remotely close. Um, so, uh, so, so that's something really that, that we've got to consider is what happens three years out. Well, that's, when you go into matters like this, it's like dining at a cafeteria. You go down the road and everything looks delicious, but you pay down yonder. You know, I want to know how much it is down there before I assume that I 
can pay for a big appetite here. I, I don't want to needlessly delay the thing, but I don't have a comfort level right now about revenues. Okay. Right. Well, let's just table it to the next meeting in, uh, in May, or do we need to make the second meeting in May? What date's the first one going to be on this morning? Oh, that's right. We just have May the one. May the, May the 11th will be okay, the only can, meeting in can, May. We can yeah. do that. At that time, if, if the staff would have us a spreadsheet so we can look at revenue projections and we can see where we're, what we've committed to and what we haven't and how it's going to impact current and capital expense. And, uh, Don't we also have a couple of uh, budget meetings in May? We do. So there's a lot of opportunity to catch up to this. Just so you know, we're, we're, we're not challenging the, the, the justification or, the, or your reasoning for needing the department. What our question is about our ability to pay four years from now. Mm -hmm. So it, this does not reflect upon your leadership or the service of your department, okay? That, so I don't want anybody to misinterpret that, that somehow we're not happy with, with Ebenezer Volunteer Fire Department. That's not what, what this delay is about, okay? All right. And, and we understand that if you, you, you did your part, which was to inform us what the interest rate is and what it's locked through, and if, if it changes because of our delay, we understand that that's on us, not you, okay? So... Uh, did I make the mo <laughs> did I make the motion to, to table until the the May May the eleventh May the eleventh Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? All in favor? Of motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Mr. Jackson, if you could please, sir, remember to let's put that at the top of our agenda list uh, for our May fifth meeting, and also if we can uh, notify the fire tax board. That we took this action, and but but we definitely would like to act on it. So, um, so I think they need to have a seat at the table as yeah, well. Let's let's be sure and call Mr. Goodman. He's a polite country Christian gentleman, but I've, as Mr. <laughs> Robertson would like to say, he's gotten out of my lane in regards to Mr. Goodman's authority, and was politely told not to do that again. So. Mm -hmm make sure he's aware of what we're doing right okay okay thank you thank, thank you right. sir thanks for coming gentlemen planning director ron smith will present the next item which is proposed extra toward, toward jurisdiction release from the city of statesville <clears throat> thank you the request that i have for you tonight is basically to uh, bring several properties that Iredell County owns that are that include and are surrounding the the landfill and which are located in three different types of jurisdiction out of the city's jurisdiction and, and put it under the county's control uh, as you can see from this map the yellow areas are within the city limits of Statesville the area in red where the line, the red line, denotes the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city, and the blue line shows the properties owned by Iredell County. And I've been working with um, David Lambert and Tracy Jackson to put this together um, to bring this resolution to you and propose that we bring all of these parcels, or request the city to bring all of these parcels out of their jurisdiction and into the county's zoning and subdivision jurisdiction. We have regulations in place that would cover future landfill expansions and that would cover the landfill. And they are similar to those of the cities, but not really the same process. As a second part to this request is a, uh, a, de a de annexation request that's going through the, is being proposed uh, to bring these parcels out of the city limits. That's not something that we can do tonight. We can only deal with the ETJ.
but there is a concurrent request for the de-annexation as well. And uh, Mr. Pope and I have presented a resolution for your endorsement, and if you choose to endorse this tonight, we'll take another resolution to the city, or this resolution to the city, to get another resolution that would convey the transfer of the ETJ. From that point, we would have 60 days to establish the new zoning district on all of these parcels, uh, except for those in the city, which would have to be done at a later date. So I know this is a little complicated. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. They released some property a few years back in a similar request, didn't they? I think there was some area around the airport, if I'm not mistaken. I thought we did some out there when we bought that golf course. It might have been. Any questions for Ms. Smith? Thank you, Ms. Smith. Thank you. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Any questions regarding the motion? Both motions have been made to approve. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Uh, Tax Administrator Bill Doolittle ha has the next two items, refunds and releases, as well as a request to approve budget amendment number 63. Good evening. <clears throat> I've reviewed the refunds and releases. None of the board members are on them. I respectfully request that they be approved. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Okay. Yes. My, my name appears on here. What? I apologize. <laughs> you do have one that you were not aware of. And, and does it mean I owe you or you owe me? We owe uh, you a little bit. You sold a car, turned in the tag, and are entitled to a small refund. So you owe me? You would not be able to vote on that. We owe you a little bit of money. I'm sorry. I'm in favor of it, though. Well, I think so. <laughs> Not a lot, but a little bit. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I can't vote on this. Okay. I have a motion. Motion to approve the request for refunds and releases. Motion to approve. Any questions regarding the motion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, likewise. The second item is uh, back in January, we had requested permission to go out for a request for a proposal for uh, some addressing software and services. In preparing the proposal and searching for vendors to actually send proposals to, we found that no one had a software package that existed except for one vendor. Everybody else was going to have to come in as a consultant, help us design one and write one. Uh, our experience with doing that has been rather expensive in the past. So we did some searching. I have checked with uh, many other sources to see if there is another vendor on a national level and a local level. Actually, the software that we're looking at and services was developed in Mecklenburg County. This product, along with a couple other products, cost Mecklenburg about a million dollars. We're looking at acquiring the software for, and services for around 120000 uh, It is a sole source. There is no other vendor that I can find nationally who has a product that exists. So we're requesting a budget amendment from the 911 funds, budget amendment 63, and approval of a sole source contract with Farragut Systems Incorporated. Any questions for Mr. Doolittle? No questions? Okay, do we have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to approve Budget Amendment 63 for the purchase of 911 Central Database Software from the Emergency Telephone System Fund. Okay, any questions regarding the motion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? There's a second part to the motion. Mr. Robertson, please uh, be. The second part is, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to approve a sole source agreement with Farragut Systems to purchase the Address One product for centralized 
E911 addressing solution and street center line system. Okay, thank you, Mr. Robinson. Any questions regarding the motion? All in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Member number seven is a request from the Sheriff's Department to uh, a budget amendment, and Mike Phillips will make that presentation. We're requesting approval to um, transfer to, to appropriate $215,000 of our federal equity sharing funds. Um, this will be for a project to convert uh, 50 of our vehicles to propane. They will actually operate on propane as well as gasoline. We're also asking for consent to apply for a clean fuel technology grant that will be in the amount of $150,000. If awarded that grant, then that would reduce the amount of equity sharing money that we would actually spend. Um, the, MAC, the, the total cost of the whole project of the 50 vehicle project is $215,000. The $150,000 grant does have a match, which we would use the 66,000 of federal equity sharing to meet the $215,000, $215,000 cost of the project, along with the $150,000 grant, if we're awarded. So that's what we're asking. Any questions, Mr. Phillips? Mr. Phillips, you're gonna. You're going to take the 215 out of your federal equity sharing, and then you're going to apply for the grant. So there's nothing that would prevent us from spending 215, applying the grant, and then reimbursing ourselves. That's completely legal to do that, I guess. Yes. What we're going to do is actually what we'll do is if we receive the grant, which we haven't been notified right. if we've been awarded a grant or not, if we get the 150,000, then 66,000 of the 215 will be used as our match for that grant, which okay. would reduce our <coughs> uh, the amount of federal federal equity sharing money that we would have to spend. I have spoken with um, the grant, and they have said that that's fine to, to okay. do it that way. Right. So. Any other questions? If not, I'll receive a motion. Can I ask him one question? Sure. It's, uh, has this been done elsewhere? Yes, there are several agencies um, in South Carolina that have done it. There are a couple of agencies in North Carolina that, ha that are applying for the same grant that we are who are looking to do this. Uh, probably initially for the same reasons that we were trying to reduce costs, but also for the other added benefits of reducing the emissions and that those. And my understanding, this company is going to put in the infrastructure where we can refuel. Is that correct? And That's correct. We've spoken with two companies, Energy United and also Alliance Auto Gas, and both companies are, are going to put in the infrastructure and the pumping stations. We'll have one in the south end, one here in Statesville, okay. and one in the north end. Any, any more questions? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay, motion to approve. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed by quiet. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Susan Johnson, uh, health director, or nursing director of the health department, will present item eight, nine, and ten. The first item is a request for a budget amendment. Um, to reallocate $11,865 from salary and fringe into other lines of the budget. We plan to use $7,675 to purchase computer supplies, um, computers and supplies, and um, a battery, ba a UPS battery backup and two remote printer manager license. And the remaining $4,190 would be um, used in non-depreciable uh, computer. And that would be used to purchase an additional server and a server operating system. This was presented to the Board of Health at the April meeting. Uh, they did not have to take any action on it. But this money is already in the budget under salary and fringe. And we have been able to determine that 
it would not be used under salary and fringe. Um, so we need this equipment, so we're asking that it be reallocated to the other lines. This is uh, federal WIC grant funding. I'll take any questions that you might have. Any question, Ms. Johnson? Glad you're taking advantage of it while it's still there. Thank you. Okay. All right, entertain a motion. Move that we approve budget amendment number 65 as requested, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The next item is. Um, a request for a budget amendment. Uh, we received word from the state that we would be receiving $21,928 in additional one-time family planning bonus funds. These funds can be used for any Title X approved service. The state is encouraging us to use these funds to provide tubal ligation sterilizations. And um, we your memo says that we will secure contracts um, from local providers to do these sterilizations. We did receive a similar uh, block of money about three months ago, and we have already been able to secure contracts. Um, so that is one change from the memo that you have. We have contract with a hospital, an anesthesia group, and two OBGYN physicians to perform these tubal ligations. Uh, the cost that we've been able to um, to get to do those services is $3,020. So we would be able to perform seven tubal ligations with these funds and any remaining balance we would use to purchase Title X approved uh, supplies for the family planning clinic. Any questions? Do you think you'll be able to use all that money? Yes, we already have. Uh, one of the requirements is that women sign the uh, consent for the tubal ligation 30 days ahead of time, and we already have a sufficient number of women that have signed consents and are just waiting on approval to use this money. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Any additional questions for Ms. Johnson? No, I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve the request for a budget amendment. Number 66, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any, any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, likewise. The next item is approval of uh, CPT codes and CDT codes. Sorry. Um, CPT stands for Current Procedural Terminology and CDT stands for Current Dental Terminology. These are codes that are used when providing services in the medical and dental field um, so you can do billing. We typically bring this to the board for approval in June, but we had a need to add some codes and fees so we could um, use those for services that we need to provide. Um, they're here before you. If you have questions about any of the codes, I'll, I'll be glad to answer them, but I'm not going to take your time and explain exactly why. Ms. But Johnson, are, are these, these changes, they just reflect that if we don't bill that amount that we probably, we'd, we're missing out recouping Medicaid reimbursements? That's, that's correct. Okay, good. I'm glad y'all are staying on top of this. The Board of Health did approve um, these these codes at their last meeting as Outstanding. well. Outstanding. Okay. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve the codes as presented. Okay. Motion to approve. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, likewise. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Memo number 11 is a request to approve a use agreement with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, Ken Vaughn will make that presentation. I think the uh, memo 
outlines our purpose, but briefly what it is that we have a room available in the center that's no longer being used by the soil survey group, which was a project that went on for many years, uh, room 158, approximately 400 square feet. None of the present agencies in the building have need or use for this facility. We have been approached by the USDA wildlife group for a office space in the county. I think Mr. Mashburn and I concur in that this could be a good use of this space, uh, even though it will not be a specifically assigned agent or person to Iredell County. They'll be working as a district in particularly the western part of the state that we can have some more use of them. And uh, Mr. Moore, who is the person that would be occupying the space, and I've had some conversations about projects that we could probably engage in. And uh, we did have a little problem initially in negotiating through the federal bureaucracy with a rental agreement, but now they're calling it a lease agreement. And we feel like it's consistent with uh, other agencies in the building uh, and does have the interest of the county and the citizens combined into that. And therefore, it is our recommendation that you approve this lease. I'll be glad to try to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions? Does it require any notification for us terminated, Mr. Vaughn? Or didn't uh, 60 days. Either one can do it. Uh, that's on. Uh, hmm. uh, it's next to the last page. This uh, become effective April 1, 2010, and shall continue for five years initially. And then it says uh, can be terminated by either party providing a 60-day notice. Okay. In writing, yes, sir. I kept looking up the bullet for once. I didn't see it. Okay, that's fine. Any uh, additional questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have one comment, and uh, that's on uh, the page, uh, uh, the first page of the agreement, uh, item number six. Uh, USDA does not pay in advance. They only pay in arrears. So uh, they had written in that this would be done annually. I have discussed this with the um, district officer or the, the state officer, uh, and they have agreed to change that from every year to every quarter. So, um, and, and every month is really too much for us for the amount anyway, but every quarter would ensure that uh, they wouldn't get too far in arrears. So. Yeah, this was a point that I mentioned to them and recommended that we consider at least quarterly payments because I didn't want to see a whole year uh, go by without it. And uh, we are not committing for anything other than normal maintenance, that is janitorial supplies, uh, you know, that type of thing, utilities, uh, any uh, amenities they want will be at their expense. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. Thank you. Okay. Entertain a motion at this time. Motion to approve this request, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The, um, the next item is, of course, the approval of the um, minutes, and then there is also, uh, if I'm not sure if you're planning tonight to uh, fill the slots uh, that were vacated by uh, Commissioner Williams, but um, the next item is the approval of the minutes of April the 6th. Okay, I must approve the minutes. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, that I was absent uh, last time, so I won't make that motion. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? That okay. takes care of the administrative matters, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are no announcements of vacancies occurring on boards and commissions. Uh, appointment for the board to boards and commissions. Appointments to the boards of commissioner representative. 
<laughs> yeah, Rush Racing Advisory Board, one appointment. Memory for that. Motion to table. Motion to table. All in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Nursing Home Advisory Board, two appointments. Mr. Chairman nominates Sandra, Sandra Smith and Colleen Caldwell. Okay, any additional nominations? All in favor of the two nominations, please say aye. 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 Adult Care Home Community Advisory Committee, three appointments. Mr. Chairman, I uh, nominate uh, Philip Killam and Ruth Anderson. Okay. And any additional? That's three. That's, so that was two, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Unfinished business. Mr. Chairman, I'm I'm sorry, but I just want to interrupt for a moment. Did you okay. uh, did you table item A? I believe we skipped it inadvertently. No, we're, we're not going to redo committees tonight. Okay, so you are tabling yeah. that item tonight. Yeah. Okay. To, sorry, to the next meeting or on that, the appointment to the committees yeah oh yeah I'd, I'd like for us to talk between one another about our schedules and see what works for who if we can <laughs> well, we, we just not we're not clear if you tabled it or not motion so. to the table mr chairman okay, okay motion to the table any questions regarding the motion all in favor of the motion please say aye. Aye. aye aye we may need that combat medic to come back <laughs> after we talk committee assignments Okay. Unfinished business. And none. Um, it's now time for a public comment period. I have Mrs. Summer Lifford to speak. Um, I have an ongoing issue with Iredale County and their ability to meet ADA standards. Uh, four years ago, just several months after my son was killed in Iraq, my older son was arrested by the, the Iredale County Sheriff's Department. They called me. I told them that I would go get him and I would bring him in. I did that. When I got to the jail, that's when I was told what it was about, and I advised the deputy, deputy at that time that I needed an interpreter for my son. The deputy advised me to get one myself. I then told the deputy that it was ADA law, federal law, that the sheriff's department offer my son an interpreter who is profoundly deaf. Again, the a deputy told me that they would get one, but I would have to pay for it. I advised the deputy that I did not have to pay for it, that again, this was a federal law that the Iredale County Sheriff's Department needed to meet. At that point in time, the deputy told me if I didn't keep my mouth shut, I was going to be arrested for disturbing the peace. I told the deputy I hadn't done anything wrong, and he gave me a second warning to either shut up and leave, quote, shut up and leave, or be arrested. I chose to shut up and leave. I called ADA in Raleigh. I spoke with, I went through the Attorney General's office. From my understanding, the Attorney General worked with the county attorney. I spoke to Mr. Pope. He doesn't have any rec recollection of this happening. The offer was that we do not sue the county for a substantial amount of money, but that these regulations be met. There is no dedicated TTY line or TTD line for the hearing impaired in Iredale County to go to the Sheriff's Department. I called the Sheriff's Department today. I talked to communications, and they told me, yes, they do accept TTY calls, but they, send, they are sent to them through 911. Not all hearing impaired people need to call 911. There is no list of interpreters with the Sheriff's Department, which was part of the agreement for us not to enforce a lawsuit. There is no list with the Sheriff's Department. My daughter is a retired Statesville Police, Department, police officer. Four years ago when she was on duty, she was dispatched to the county for a deaf woman that had been 
involved in a domestic violence act. My daughter went because she was dispatched out of the city into the county. This is inexcusable that this, the Iredale County Sheriff's Department does not have an interpreter for our hearing impaired community. On Monday, my son, uh, uh, several weeks ago, the beginning of March, my son was in a activity in Mooresville. He was denied access. Any events held in the county or the city, the city needs, to, if it's a private event, the city needs to enforce the fact that there's an interpreter present. If it's a county event, such as a meeting or even a parade, if there's someone speaking, it is the law that the county provides an interpreter. This is the first time in Iredale County history there has been an interpreter at a county commissioner's meeting. This law has been on the books for 21 years. The county has to tell the federal and state government that they have ADA enacted and on board. This is not the case. Again, the beginning of March, my son was in an activity in Mooresville. I received a call from the Mooresville Police Department that he had been denied access. He became angry, he lashed out, and he was arrested by the Mooresville Police Department. I immediately went to the magistrate's office and I requested that Magistrate Green call an interpreter. Magistrate Green closed the door on my face. I waited about 35, 40 minutes. I went back to the door. I knocked on the door again. I then again asked Magistrate Green if my son had been brought in yet, and he said no. I said, have you gotten a hold of, a, of an interpreter? And he said no, and closed the door. I waited another 30 minutes in the Sheriff's Department. I went back up to the door. I knocked on the door again. Magistrate Green came to the door, and I said, my son has got to have an interpreter. He didn't acknowledge me standing there. He closed the door on my face. I received a text message from my son that he had been taken to the Iredale County, the Iredale Hospital. I immediately left the Sheriff's Department and went to the hospital. There was no interpreter provided there. When they told me they were taking my son to jail, I went home. There was nothing more I could do. From my home, I called Magistrate Green, and I told Magistrate Green that my son had to have an interpreter. It was the law. Magistrate Green told me to take it up with the judge on Monday. I told Magistrate Green that I would be contacting the ADA on Monday. He said, you can take that up with the judge, too. At that point in time, I told him, I said, Magistrate Green, I will be taking this up with you and the judge on Monday. And through frustration, I called him a name that I should not have called him. Saturday morning, a deputy sheriff was at my house to arrest me. I was sentenced to four days in jail. If the Iredale County Sheriff's Department had been on board with ADA, as they promised four years ago, I could have gone to the Sheriff's Department and they could have provided the magistrate with, it, with an interpreter. Because the Sheriff's Department is not on board and obviously does not understand the importance of our deaf community being protected, I had no protection myself. At this point in time, I have taken this to the U.S. Attorney's Office to the, and to the Justice Department. I hate to think that it's going to take a substantial amount of money out of this county in a lawsuit to have this county adhere to ADA laws. Our people with disabilities vote and they pay taxes and they're not given the same rights and privileges of hearing people. My question is if a deaf woman calls a deputy and he comes out to her house and she's been raped how long is it going to take that deputy to figure out what she's trying to say? Because an intelligent, hearing, speaking woman would not make any sense, let alone a deaf woman that does not speak exact English but speaks ASL, American Sign Language. She's not only been victimized once by her perpetrator, but she will be victimized by the Sheriff's Department. This has got to stop. 
We've got to get this county back on board. I'm thoroughly disgusted and appalled that twice, twice I have been threatened to be put in jail simply by demanding that my son be given his civil rights. And I would venture to say, if this happened to any one of your family members, those deputies, their badge would be on the sheriff's desk before this, his next shift. We've got to get this taken care of. I'm not going to stop now. At this point in time, I'm going to get your attention. We're going to get this taken care of. It needs to be addressed by the city, by the county commissioners. I'm going to Mooresville. I'm going to address the Mooresville Police Department. I've addressed the city, the city of Statesville, and I will be going to Troutman. We have 313,978 deaf people in the state of North Carolina. That's huge. That's that is 0.53 percent. 0.53 percent of our citizens are not being represented properly in this state. They're going to be represented. I am giving you the only copy I have. Unfortunately, I gave them to the city council last night. A couple of deaf people came to my house today to pick up a copy, and I had to give one to, to my son's attorney. But this is the law. And this isn't the only law. This is just for police action. There has never been an interpreter to a public event held by this county, ever. A, a deaf person should not have to call the county commissioner and say, can I have an interpreter? You have microphones in front of you so these people can hear. This man deserves to have this microphone in front of him and shouldn't have to request it. It should be done out of gratitude that he lives in the county and he pays taxes and that he is a citizen of North Carolina. I hope that, that this act doesn't have to go too much further, but at this point in time, I'm just, after doing this for four years and getting nowhere, I just feel like we need some further action. And I hate, to, I hate the fact that it's going to be, it's going to cost the county money. But now it's going to cost the county a substantial amount of money. They need TTYs in every county office and a dedicated line so deaf people can call. Do you, I, none of you have TTYs in your office. Ms. Lifford, you. your time's up. Well, you know what? This is more important. I understand, but time. you've already gone over. Well, and I'm sorry. I apologize. Each one of you need a TTY in your office so a deaf person can call their county commissioner. Each office in the county needs a TTY so deaf people can count, call county offices. And I apologize, but this is the exact attitude that I got from the county attorney. My time is up. So is yours. Do we have any new business? Any new business? Can I manage this report? Did you, not, did you not have one other? Uh, Mr. Crosby. Mr. Crosby here. Mr. Crosby, come on up. I'm sorry, sir. Come on up. Good evening. Good evening, sir. This meeting has been a hard act to follow, uh, but I would, would have <laughs> liked to congratulate Mr. Mitchell becoming again, again our county commissioner and to the other chairman and vice chairman. I think this will be well received by the public. We had the uh, serviceman here in the Vietnam War. I had four nephews in Vietnam at the same time, one of whom came back with Agent Orange and is no longer with us. He left a fine young man and a daughter to mourn his absence and, and rejoice in his memory. Uh, 
recently I met with a United States Senator about uh, some things that I've talked to people about before, about using road and highway money for flood control structures, hydropower, water supply, wildlife habitat, and recreation. And there's three important things coming up that's in the works to be done. One project is in Commissioner Mitchell's back door where they want to pave and and build a bridge on Williamsburg Road. There has there is and has been three hydropower plants that I know of on Rocky Creek. And one of them still generating electricity. And and there is a need for flood control. And uh, there, the, or at the fourth, Williamsburg Road is is a high priority in my book and in the people in that area. And this could also be a, an access road for I-77. If they just, uh, I can remember when you, in going through Williamsburg Road, you were required to stop and blow your horn to notify the people around the sharp curve that you were coming. And that's how sharp that is. Now, a dam there and impounding the water uh, could straighten that road a lot and save travel time. Okay, uh, these things are in Grange policy, keep article clean, supports it, Farm Bureau, and I've contacted the Highway Commissioner and the Transportation Committee Chairman, the neighboring counties, and the Senator's office called me today and advised me to contact the County Commissioners and the city officials for support on these projects. So that's why I'm going to bring this before you so it be given proper consideration. If you have any questions, I have a lot of information about these things that I could give you and a lot of uh, engineering studies have been done on these things. you have any questions? Any questions for Mr. Crosby? Thank you. No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, um, we've got two al uh, an alibi on our uh, on our agenda. Um, we've got uh, there was a vacancy on the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council where we do have a, a nominee, and also on the Nursing Home Advisory Board. We've got a nominee. If I, if I could be allowed, I'll make those nominations sure. now. Okay. Um, for the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, um, uh, Chief District Judge uh, Dale Graham has named Judge Tom Church as the designee for the JCPC. So I'll, I'll place his name in nomination before the board. Any questions regarding that motion? All in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Okay. For the Nursing Home Advisory Board, um, nominate. Uh, Jean Einhart um, to be uh, to be on the board. In addition to nominees, or are there any questions going to motion? If not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Robertson. Okay. Mr. Messner, I think we're your report now. Uh, I know this is kind of awkward, but before I make a report, I need to confer for just a moment with the HR director. Can I have just a moment to do sure. that? Thank sure. you. Taking place, can we, in closed session, can we also add legal to that uh, reason for a closed session? Legal. 
Sure. He gives the statute, Madam Clerk. 143, 318-11-A-3. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I apologize for that. Um, okay. I, uh, I have nothing further as far as uh, the uh, manager's report tonight other than to, I would like to say that um, it's, it's good to work with Mr. Mitchell again. It's been a, a few years, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to work with you again. And I congratulate Mr. Norman and Mr. Johnson on their uh, elections tonight as well, and look forward to working with both of you on that. Thank you, sir. Uh, at this time, I entertain a motion to go to closed session. Uh, GS 143-318.11, Section A4. One, GS 143, 318, 11, Section A3. All in favor of that, most please say aye. Aye. aye.
fed me in a year. <laughs> Whatever. Robertson. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll make a motion to call for a public hearing on May 11, 2010, at 7 o'clock, regarding an economic development incentive of $50,000 per year over a 10 year period for an undisclosed project based upon a $16 million investment in Iredell County. Thank you, sir. Any, any questions regarding the motion? No, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to call for a public hearing on May 11th, 2010, at 7 p.m., regarding an economic development incentive of between $51,385 to $58,000. 395 over a five-year period for Carolina Beer and Beverage based on a 4.4 to 5 million investment in Iredale County. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chairman. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 aye.